This is going to be a tough decision. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Keep It or Sell It. And today on the chopping block is the Mesa Buggy Badlander. Now, I've had this amplifier for quite some time now, and I've had this back and forth with it the whole time I've had it. I've had moments where I loved it, and I've had moments where I was kind of like indifferent about it. Like, man, I wish it was a little more of this and a little less that. You know how it goes with your amps, right? You just have those situations every once in a while where you turn it on and you're like, man, I just it's just not working for me today. And this is one of the few amps that I have that I've had this situation with uh, every once in a while. For the most part, I really like it. There's some great things about it, but there's always that thing on the back of my mind that's like, I wish it had a little more fullness. Now, what I mean by that is it's, uh, it does have plenty of low end, but it's very sculpted. There's just this emptiness in it with this certain frequency range that's missing. Now, I could probably fix that issue by putting an EQ in the loop, but uh, for today's video, I'm just going to concentrate on what the amp sounds like when I boost it. The boost I'm using today is the Mud Killer, and you really don't want to play this amplifier without a boost. It definitely needs one. Again, this amplifier is extremely sculpted. I mean, they really nip-tucked the hell out of this thing and took every little bit of extra everything out of it uh, right down to the gain i mean it has just enough gain for me i have the gain cranked on the crush channel just to get it to do what i want it to do for rhythm and leads now i will be going through all three channels or modes if you will in this video uh, quickly but uh, let's just start out with my favorite settings here they are on the screen now i will not change the settings in this video because this amp is just set up in my opinion the best way it can be and uh, another note too one of the things that I did with this amp that improved it as far as I'm concerned anyways is I switched from the EL34s to the 6L6 tubes I found that it just had uh, a better sound to it I don't know if it's a placebo thing or what but for me it just sounded better so I'm sticking with the 6L6s with this amplifier so let's hear what it sounds like in crush mode right now with my favorite settings Now, if you ask me, that sounded really good with that riff, you know? I mean, there's a lot of great clarity, and that's where that sculpting really helps out, you know? I mean, that sculpting of the amplifier, taking out all the extras, helped with the clarity so that all the little nuance and little intricacies that I was playing stood out the way I wanted them to. Now, that's the good point about it, but sometimes you want a little more. You want a little more saturation and a little more fullness. Again, it's got plenty of low end, but there's just some frequencies missing somewhere in the low mids or something like that that just make it sound a little hollow sometimes. And I guess it depends on your taste or the style of music you're playing or maybe even your pickups. I don't know, but it's sometimes very prevalent to me and sometimes it's not. Now, with that particular riff, I think everything sounded great. Now, I think the Badlander is great for multi-tracking as well because it's so sculpted and there's a lot of clarity with it. You don't get too much saturation or mush in your tracks. I mean, there's still this great articulation and aggression in the tracks when you uh, stack them on top of each other. So that's a really good feature with this amp as well. So here lies my issue. Like, I love all that stuff about the amplifier, but it comes with a price. Because sometimes I want a little bit more, you know. I mean, like, with the Herbert, with the Splawn, the Mezzabarba, the Red 7, Savage, I get a lot of that fullness and that less sculpted and very texturized, saturated, and aggressive tone out of those amps. But with the Badlander, it's missing some of that. But maybe and I'm just arguing with myself here on camera, but maybe I should keep it 
for that reason, because it is different than those amps. So it's this conundrum that I have right now <laughs> that I'm going through because I'm really trying to figure out if I, if I want to keep this. So uh, I'll stop blabbering here. So I'll just play a couple more riffs uh, in these settings with the crush mode. <laughs> Man, that articulation really is nice. I mean, it, it definitely helps when you're playing a lot of intricate stuff, single note stuff and whatnot. It doesn't muddy up. You can really hear every little thing that you're doing. So that is kind of nice, man. So that's why I'm struggling. You know, like I said, I got these other amps if I want that full saturation and less uh, sculpted sound. Maybe I'm going to need your guys' help on this decision because I'm really struggling with it right now. I really don't know what I should do. So let's go ahead and switch to crunch mode while I'm in crush mode. I'll start out in crush and go to crunch and you can hear the amp downshift a little bit and uh, hear the difference. <laughs> So you can definitely hear there's less gain with the uh, crunch mode and it still sounds really good. Let's do a couple riffs with that now. Sounds good, you know, I do like how sculpted it is with those riffs, it's just very, very articulate. So, I mean, the, the, the downside to that is you got to make sure that you're playing things properly because you don't have any gain to cover up your mistakes and to fill in the holes. But if you play things right with this amplifier, you definitely get rewarded for that, you know. Uh, so I do love the clarity. Man, this is tough. Uh, <laughs> let's switch over to the clean channel now. And uh, I'm going to keep the effects on because that's just how I play this amplifier. So I use uh, the Julia Chorus and the, the Flashback uh, 2 delay pedal. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a good sounding clean channel, but it's a bit thin for me. I like something that's a little warmer and I got the, you know, the bass cranked all the way up on it. I mean, there's really, there's really nothing else I can do to make it fuller sounding. I mean, I prefer the Diesel Herbert clean, the Mezza Barba, the Savage, the Splun clean, and uh, the JP. Those are all better clean channels. Is this a good clean channel? I think it's passable. I don't think it's very good. It, again, it's a bit thin uh, for me, and, and I don't know. It's just not my favorite clean channel. Now, I don't play the clean channel a lot anymore. I usually play the high gain stuff, but when I want a good clean channel, I want it to sound glorious. Uh, and this one just doesn't hit that mark for me. It's, again, passable, but not awesome. So I think that's considered a bit of a downside for the Badlander. The clean channel is just a bit on the lacking side. Uh, and the crush and crunch channels are actually pretty freaking good. Um, so I'm, I'm still struggling. You know, I really am. I mean, I have plenty of amps here, so if I want a clean channel, I can use something else if I wanted to record with or whatever. But I'm just thinking as a guitar player that owns just the Badlander, like what would I do with it right now? And I wouldn't be happy with the clean channel. It would be something that would be a bit of a pretty big gripe for me. Uh, so I don't know. I'm still wondering what I should do. Looking at my pedal board here, seeing if I could try a different overdrive with it. Let's try, uh, let's go back to the crush channel or crush mode or I don't know, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and I'm going to switch from the mud killer to the Mesa grid slammer and just see if that helps things out a little bit here. <laughs> Honestly, that kind of helped. Holy crap. This is how I have it set up. I got the level all the way up, gain all the way down, tone cranked on this pedal. And man, that, that's the magic with the grid slammer. I used to hate this pedal until I cranked the tone knob all the way up. And all of a sudden I was like, holy shit, where's this pedal been all my life? It's a killer pedal. It really is. And man, I got to tell you, it definitely added some life to this amp that I was missing. Let me mess around with it some more. Yeah, it's got a better feel too. It's more fun to play with that pedal. So I think that kind of helped things out a little bit. So if you have an amplifier that's, you know, might be on the chopping block with you, try some different overdrives first and uh, maybe it'll help it out a little bit. That's kind of my go-to pedal now. Whenever I'm not feeling the amp, I'll switch over to the grid slammer and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Doesn't always happen, but it happens quite often. Well, let's see how it sounds in a full mix.
have it. I went through all three modes on the amp and it sounded really good in this video and I'm still on the fence. So I want to see what your guys' thoughts are. And if I was to get rid of this, if I was to sell it, which amp should I replace it with? That's the question that I have for you guys as well, because I, if, if I'm going to sell an amp, I'm going to replace it with something else. And it's nice to kind of rotate things around every once in a while and see what other things you can discover. So anyways, well, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And to all my Patreon supporters and subscribers, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do and click the bell so that you can be notified every time I either go live or come out with another episode. Well, I got more stuff coming up for you guys, and I will see you on the next one.